So this wind has been pretty ridiculous out here today, but I have to change my hitch out and I figured I would try to make a video if I could. I hope it turns out okay. I hope you can hear me good and I hope the wind doesn't blow the camera over. But um, this is a 10,000 pound Husky hitch. A friend of mine bought it when he bought his uh, bumper pull camper. And when I started RV transport, he was nice enough to let me borrow it to get started until I could afford a hitch. And when I got my money up, I went and bought a Gen Y. And the Gen Y I bought is the, got the four holes straight down. And it is the two and a half inch shank. So it fits the receiver without the sleeve. Now, I do like that a whole lot better. And I've been using it for a year and a half, probably closer to two years, right around two years. And I tell you, the, uh, the Husky, there's a lot of play in that sleeve. So if you notice the play on the lift from back here, that's a lot. And then also, if you look down in there at those washers, they're supposed to be tied together. And there is a bolt right here that you tighten up to tighten all that stuff down and then you tighten these two nuts on the side. But apparently over time, this one has backed out. I'm sure knowing my buddy and knowing they set it up for him at the dealer where he bought the trailer, I'm, and I've never messed with it, he never messed with it, but when I used this hitch to go out to California a couple weeks ago, I kept hearing a chucking, uh, just a slamming back and forth against the truck, and I couldn't figure out what it was. Well, it's because the hitch is not, the, this, the bolt on the bottom that takes up the slack has came loose, and the hitch is moving on these bolts right here. Now, if this one down here was tightened up, I don't think it would make as much of a difference, but it has apparently backed off over time and now these washers down in here are loose. So what I wanna do, I bought this hitch just on a whim and I bought the Gen Y shank from Dan's in Elkhart. Um, I bought the bigger, heavier duty hitch because at that time I had an 18 wheeler and I never knew what I was gonna do with it. I just wanted to make sure and get a heavy one, but I kinda of went Overboard, you don't need the double shank. I don't feel like doing what we're doing. But I have way more hitch than I have truck. There's no doubt about that. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm taking the head off of this hitch, putting on the Gen Y weight distribution shank, and I'm gonna start using my Gen Y set up again. The main reason I'm gonna do that is to get rid of all this, all this. And another reason I'm gonna do that is the Gen Y will set further back. Now I'll grab a measuring tape and measure the ball to the hitch right here. And after we get it installed, I'll measure it again and show you how much further it comes back. But with the Gen Y on that hitch, it does allow me enough room to let my tailgate all the way down and not hit the jack. And I think that's a pretty awesome feature. So I'm gonna grab my tape measure and measure that right quick. And also it will take an inch and an eighth socket on here. And I do have a large adjustable wrench for the other side. And we'll go ahead and get this swapped out. And I'll show you how I set up a weight distribution hitch. That doesn't necessarily mean it's the correct way, but it's the way I was taught to do it. Now, with the tape, this is 11 and a half inches or 10 and a half inches to the center of the ball. Now just to kind of make things easier on me, I am gonna take the hitch off of the shank on this one so it's not flopping around moving around and i can actually i don't have to hold both ends i'm gonna do that first this is the half inch drive milwaukee impact and i've had this thing for a while but i never use it because it breaks everything i won't use it on lug nuts or anything else this is the same impact i used to use to take the lug nuts off of my 18 wheeler and it's stronger than my one inch air gun so both of the nuts and now I'll set that off or drop it like I do either way is fine now on this with those washers all they do 
is set right in this hole. And when you tighten this bottom bolt down, it twists the hitch and presses this stuff tight. Now, if when you're done with your hitch, in my personal opinion, what I was taught, it doesn't need to set flat like this. It needs to actually be pitched downward a little bit. So that way when your bars come off of it, they're facing down just a little bit. And when, when you pull them up tight on the trailer, they come up straight. Because if you put it on straight and you tighten your bars down, they're gonna be at an upwards angle after that. And you don't want that. You want the, you want the bars and the shank and the trailer frame and the truck frame. You want all that stuff as straight as you can get it. And if the bars are nosed up towards the trailer or pushed down too far, in my, in my opinion, that's not correct. So the next thing I'm gonna do is take my lock out. I also got these at Dan's. They're key to light. And they have a little cheap plastic rubber cover. This is a hydraulic hose end that I ordered off Amazon that has done a great job. I, I wished I'd ordered five or six of them because they, they'd really do a good job at keeping the water and stuff out of my um, out of my locks. And while this one is corroded, it stays on the truck all the time. So I feel like it's money well spent. So we're gonna take this shank and lay it to the side. I'm gonna take this out, make sure to keep up with that because I'll need it for other hitches that I have and the winch and stuff like that. And now we'll get over to this monster. Now, one thing I like about this Gen Y is if you have a tall pendle hitch trailer, you can mount it this way and use the pendle hitch up at this height. And I really like that, that's handy for me. But one thing I don't like about it is when I flip it over, and it is a handful, how low it sets to the ground. But you can see after a while, I have bottomed it out more than a few times. And if you ever get in the mud, this thing works like a, like a turning plow. It works like an anchor, it, it, it'll pull you right in. So, uh, there's that. And I should spray some oil in that. I will, after the video, I'll come back and oil it all up. And that's got that. I leave this back here pretty much all the time when, I have, when I'm using the Gen Y. And the reason for that is, uh, about a month ago, I was at McDonald's and there was a car came around and literally rear-ended me, hit me hard, so hard it, it knocked me forward. Hit me in this hitch, didn't put a mark on the hitch, kept them away from my truck. And also, it folded in the front bumper of their car. And at first I was like, oh man. And they backed up and drove off. Before I could get out of the truck, because I was in the drive-thru up against the wall, before I could get out of the truck, they had driven off. So I like leaving that on. I know it's not, you're not supposed to do that in some states, but until somebody says something to me about it, that'll stay on. I prefer removing my hitch because I don't want it getting stole, but at the same time, if it adds that kind of protection for me, I'm willing to leave it all the way. So now this monster, and now one thing I was thinking when I when I got this is oh, I'm gonna love how adjustable it is because it is, it's very adjustable. You can take and put it in this hole or you can move it down, it's three positions. But chances are, you're never going, this is the only hole that I have ever used. I've never had a need to move this hitch up and down. Now when I pull this hitch out and put the other hitch in, yeah. But the weight distribution part never really needs to be moved because the ball needs to stay around 22 inches from the ground. Now another thing I almost forgot to mention is if you notice the two little screws right here on the side of the Gen Y, those are pretty pretty neat because you can tighten them up and get rid of any rattle that may be going on in your hitch. I wish the hitch that was on the truck had a set screw on the top to go down and tighten up the other hitch and that would have got rid of a lot of the play that was coming from that, uh, from that sleeve. But that is a really good feature about the Gen Y. We'll go ahead and lock this in. 
quite like that and that's why I need to get another one of those covers because this one doesn't have anything on it but when I'm not using this part of the hitch I take it off and put it in the bed of the truck now pulling my tape again now we're at 14 and a half inches where the other one was at 10 and a half so 14 and a half inches that gives me plenty of room to let my tailgate down this hitch right here has the interlocking fingers. You mount it, you get it set where you want it. You tighten these fingers down and it literally can't move. I do like that. I just wasn't big on how the bar, how the weight distribution bars hooked in here. I like the other style better. So now if you notice the way I've got this set up, this hitch does tilt back just a little bit. Not much at all, just a slight tilt. And that is to keep those bars straight when I tighten them up. I've never had an issue. Every trailer I've ever hooked to, the bars have ran straight with the front. So let's get this one off now. This is how you tilt it. It'll pivot on that bottom one where the other one has the washers. This one you can tilt it further back or you can tilt it further forward. So while I will kind of miss that, I still think I like the other hitch overall for the back. All right, so this is the Gen Y weight distribution shank that actually goes into the Gen Y hitch. This shank is for the two and a half inch hitch. So I believe it is different if you have the one that fits the, the two inch receiver versus the two and a half inch receiver. I believe this one is a little bit meatier than the, the two inch receiver, but I'm not positive on that, you have to check. Now, um, as far as insulation goes on this one, Now, I put went in and put one bolt through, and I just want to measure to see I need to be around 22 inches from the ground. And I'm at 23 inches from the ground. So, I think that I'm going to move that. I should have measured the other one first, but I did not. See where that puts us. Dead on 22 inches from the ground. Now, as far as the washers go, I hope it's the right amount of washers because I don't have any extras. But we'll go ahead and pull the boat back out, set this in, and find out. Make sure I went back through the same hole and we're still 22 inches from the ground. ground. Yep, 22 inches. Now that is someone's, you know, I didn't set that. I, that's just what I've always heard. I've never read it on anybody's website or anything like that. I just, when I first started, I was told I needed to go 22 inches from the ground. Now. These washers right here, the big cone-shaped washers, were with this hitch when I got it, and there were one, one at the top, one at the bottom. But seeing how it pivots, the way that it pivots, I think, personally, they should both go on the top. I could be wrong on that, but that's how I'm gonna install this one. There, no washers on this bottom and I don't like that. I'm gonna stop and get some washers for it later on because I feel like it needs them. And I am not gonna tighten this all the way down, but I'm gonna snug it up just a little bit.
Now the hitch is still loose on the on the shank, and that's where this other comes into play. I'm going to tighten this up and see where we're at. Now this bolt that goes on the bottom here, it is a 15 16 and I'm not going to crank it down, just try to break it. I'm just going to ease it down, get it snug. That's snug. That's got it pulled against the bolts, these bolts, uh, pretty good. And it's also mashed all the washers down. Now, it does have that little bit of rake I was looking for. I do not know if that's gonna be the exact amount of rake I'm looking for or not, but after I hook to a load and see how the bars are gonna pull up to the trailer, I can't check it now because I don't have a trailer here, but after I check it the first time, then I'll know if I need to make other adjustments or not. So now I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these bolts up and I don't have torque specs, I wished I did, but I'm just gonna put them that, tighten them up to where I feel like they need to be tightened. They're very large bolts, so I don't think I have to worry about over tightening them, but I do not think that these, this will squeeze together enough to keep the movement out of it on its own, but we'll see. That's as tight as I want to go with those, but I did notice it did squeeze down on the shank. I never would have figured it would have bent still that thick, but it did. And uh, once it pulled down, I let it hammer on a few more times before I stopped. I think that we're all good right there. I will keep a very close eye on this stuff and watch it. The washers are tight. It has a little bit of rake I was looking for to it. I think that's it. When I bought this hitch, these came with the hitch. Now I used to wonder, what were those little balls for on the big on the big hitches? I didn't understand. I had never been around campers or I'd all the ton of goosenecks and 18 wheelers and all that stuff. I'd never been around a bumper pull camper. So what this is for, I scoot my seat back a little bit, is sway control. It goes on there like that. And you'll have pins like this that you put through and that's got that locked onto that ball where it can't come off and then there will be another ball on the trailer frame back here that will hook up and that's why we generally can't use them don't use them on uh and probably not required to use them is because we can't manipulate the frame of that trailer you know we can't drill a hole and put the ball we can't drill into the frame of that trailer and put that ball on i mean that's for if it's your trailer and you get the sway control if you decide to opt for that you can have them install it wherever you buy your trailer i'm sure but just for uh demonstrational purposes at this point uh, this would be on your trailer frame you would put it on this ball as well hopefully it'd be a little straighter than that put the other pin in back here and then you'll use this to tighten and loosen the sway. Now, I'm going to go ahead and let the tension completely off. And it moves very, very freely. You'd never notice that was there. And what this is, a, is a friction brake. And as you tighten it down, now it gets harder to move. But the big truck and the heavy trailer you know, they'll move this a lot smoother than you can with your hand. But if you see the truck going down the road, it's got these on it, that's what it's for. It reduces the, uh, the sway. You know, the truck and trailer from pivoting in the center. Because now it has this, basically a friction brake between it that will give and it will turn. You know, when you go to make a, like at this setup right here, when you go to make a left-hand turn, this will stretch all the way out when you go to turn back this goes all the way in but as you're going down the road this helps hold the truck and trailer straight in a line as you're going down the road i hope i'm explaining that right if somebody knows better let me know in the comments so if you over tighten it that's where you get into a binding issue that's where you can't do it you gotta just barely put a little tension on it you know that's loose 
that's about where I would try to. I've never ran one of these, so like I say, if anybody knows any more about it than I do in the description, please let me know. Or in the comments, please let me know. So anyway, I have been thinking of taking this ball, welding a piece of uh, one inch steel, not one inch, uh, four inch long piece of steel about the thickness of this hitch onto my saddle and then wet, cutting this shank off and welding it to the side there that way I do have the option to put it on and try it out and if I love it that's great if I don't love it then I bring it back and throw it in a scrap pile with everything else I got. The thought has crossed my mind about trying to rig one of these up where I can use it without manipulating the trailer. And if y'all were like me and didn't know what those balls were for, that's it. I figure since I went this far, I may as well show the rest of the Gen Y. So, if you pull the pin back out, then you can pull this out. And it is very heavy. Then, if you're just pulling a utility trailer or something like that, there's your 2 and 5 sixteenths ball. You can take it out, flip it over. And you have your 2 inch ball, which is what my trailers have. And then... I'm not sure how that would work, but I think that will work for a draw bar. I've never used it for that. And then also you can get an inch and seven eighths ball with a long shank to go through there. And that is, two and a half inch. So it'll have to have a three inch shank on it to go all the way through. Now, another good thing about this is you can move it down one hole and slide this in and now that's your panel so I would if I was needing to pull a panel or do something that required a panel hitch there's that and I should have put this one in first but it is what it is there's that. So now when you get where you're going, you just push this back, get your panel ring out of it, and then you can pull it back. Or it actually does have a hole for open and closed. If you know you're never going to use that top hole, you can leave that right there. But I have noticed that a lot of times when you go to set your receiver on, it'll hit right there. So I leave that in my toolbox. And I don't pull a terrible amount of panel hitch trailers anymore. I uh, will tell you this, if you're looking at getting into RV transport and you're considering Jim Bone Company, they pull a lot of panel hitch trailers. It's a good idea to have a panel hitch. That's where I was at when I bought this. It served me well the whole time I was there. So keep that in mind. As far as the hitch itself, the whole little Gen Y family here, I, I don't recall how much I have tied up in it. But I know that I don't feel like I'll ever need another hitch. You're not going to break that. You can put that on a bulldozer and it's going to hold up fine. Um, this, the double shank, that is way too much hitch for my truck. And it's way too much hitch for any trailer I've ever seen. But it is going to be just fine. You know, I don't feel like I'll ever have any issues with it either. Um, like I say, when I'm at home or after I unhook or whatever I do, because a lot of times I'll pull multiple fifth wheels in a row and I won't need anything back here. I'll leave this on just so whenever I'm empty, if somebody does rear end me, it'll protect the back of my truck. But the, the actual uh, weight distribution hitch does go in the toolbox. So that leaves this right like that. There also is another hole in the top of the panel where you could hook a smaller draw bar, I guess, if you had that for like farm, farm stuff. But if I could, I would rather go through the big one. But I've never actually even noticed that there, much less thought about using it. I hope this video has helped you out some, especially if you're considering the uh, Gen Y hitch or weight distribution hitch or any of this stuff. Um, it comes in so many different configurations. Make sure and be mindful of that. If you order one piece for a two and a half and another piece for a two inch, I don't know for sure that that'll work. I don't think it will. I think it all has to be for the same two inch or two and a half inch configuration. But uh, anyway, 
I was looking at getting one, the other one. I kind of wish that I had bought the one that had one hole on top, three holes on bottom, until I realized I could flip this upside down and it gave me extra height for the panel. So I'm happy with this one. You do have to watch it if you're gonna be going through anywhere where you can bottom out because it will literally bottom out and hang you up. This hitch destroyed my other mud flap, you know, because it was mounted closer to the back. But with this one, I won't have to worry about that with this mud flap. But um, anyhow, uh, I'm really happy with the setup. Extremely versatile, stupid strong. I mean, you can put this thing on a bulldozer and you're not gonna hurt it. Um, the double shank weight distribution shank that I got, not necessary, but I was there. And if I remember right, he had the two inch single shank or he had the two and a half inch double shank. And I'm figuring this is for moving mobile homes or something. It's way too big of a hitch for my truck. I know that, but uh, you never know what I'm gonna get into from one day to the next. So I'd rather buy too much than too little. So. Anyway, all the links are in the description to the Gen Y hitch and to the weight distribution and to the Husky. If y'all want to get on there and check prices or anything like that. Um, and yeah, I hope you found something you like in this video. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.